Hello, everyone. My name is Adam Williams, and you are listening to another episode of Retail Redeveloped. I am very excited to be joined today by one Mr. Paul Lee. He is here to talk to us about Fashion Go Week. Now, who is Paul? He is the CEO of NHN Global, where he provides executive leadership to wholly owned business-to-business technology, including Fashion Go, a wholesale online marketplace for fashion apparel, accessories, footwear, et cetera. Paul, thank you so much for joining, joining me today. Thanks for having me, Adam. All right, Paul, so I want to hear all about Fashion Go Week because uh, somebody from my team looked at me uh, kind of crossways when, when I told her I did not know what the heck Fashion Go Week was, and uh, obviously I'm, I'm very ashamed of that. So I'm looking forward to you explaining to me you, what you guys are all about. But before we do that, do me a favor, take a minute and two minutes if you need it, and, and just go through a little bit about who you are what your path was to get uh, to where you are today, and explain to us a little bit about the why behind you know, Fashion Go and, and, and your business in particular. Uh, sure. Uh, let me start with my background. I started my career on Wall Street, where I spent many years covering and transacting on behalf of consumer and retail companies. Names you probably recognize, uh, Nordstrom, Best Buy, Sally Beauty, and Wrigley's are some examples. I left investment banking in 2014. Uh, there was an interesting op- opportunity out in Los Angeles. Uh, it was an e-commerce platform, uh, which I had a very strong interest in. Uh, so since then, I've held various executive roles, mainly in e-commerce and technology. And since January of this year, uh, I've been at the helm as the CEO of NHN Global, which owns Fashion Go. As far as my career, you'll, uh, you'll see that I previously worked with big box retailers uh, that are customer-facing, and now uh, you know, I'm sort of behind the scenes at a B2B e-commerce business that's driving the fashion industry. Uh, I think the funny thing here is that I literally had two and a half months of transition period as the incoming new CEO before the pandemic hit. So Excellent. Ti- you know, timing is everything, Paul, yeah. in life. I don't know if you knew yeah. that. Yes, I have a great knack for timing, obviously, but but all in all, it's been a thrilling ride. Uh, no complaints here, and uh, and these are, quite frankly, Adam, you know, these are pretty interesting times. Yeah, I, I could not agree and, more. I mean, we're going through a hell of a purge right now in the retail world, but uh, anytime we go through something this drastic, there, there's a lot of opportunity for for new voices, new. Uh, opinions, new perspectives, and uh, it's it's pretty. I, I'm very I'm I'm stressed out for all my friends in the business, including myself, as we go through this time. But I'm very excited and optimistic about the future. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so are we. Um, and, and you know, obviously, with the pandemic, uh, there, there are opportunities as well, which I'll get into. But let me uh, talk about that and go a little bit. Uh, as far as who we are in the platform. Uh, so we're a pioneer in the B2B fashion wholesale online marketplace. And we've been around since 2002, so that's close to two decades. And, you know, 2002 through even 2010, you know, online selling in B2B fashion world was non-existent. So we sort of created that market for ourselves. And, and hence our business you know, have seen it all as far as cycles and transformation within the fashion industry. In two decades, we've gained not only experience in the wholesale fashion generally, but also the ability to refine our technology to serve both our sellers and buyer base. And uh, at the moment, we have over 1,200 vendors and 420,000 retail buyers that actively uh, shop with us. And both categories are growing significantly, by the way. And with the number of brands, that translates into over a million styles on a given day. And our online marketplace is uh, really optimized for discovery from the moment buyers come to visit. So because it's a closed B2B environment, there's a registration process. Uh, After that, retailers get immediate access to the brand and merchandise and also access to industry insights and resources that retailers can use to discover trends and best sellers. And I think it's important to note that we charge the lowest commission in the industry uh, to our vendors to use our platform. And that's really to ensure that our vendors are charging the lowest possible prices for their merchandise. And that's always been a focus and a goal for us to ensure that 
retail buyers are getting the best possible merchandise at the lowest price on Fashion Go. Can we can we back up a little bit? Because again, I, I am a complete newbie when it comes to your business. And could you walk me through your customer process? Like who is an ideal customer for you on the business side? Who is an ideal customer for you on the consumer side? And let me, let me help me understand, you know, what you guys' secret sauce is and, and what you're bringing to the table and who should get excited about, about what you guys have going on. Yeah. I mean, if, if I was to describe the 1,200 or so uh, vendors or brands that are on Fashion Go, um, I think the categorization, the best categorization would be kind of contemporary brands uh, at an accessible and approachable prices. Uh, perhaps clothing you would find at H&M or Zara or someplace like that. And uh, when you see, uh, I'll get into the online trade show in a second, uh, but the exhibitors for online trade show, you'll see the diverse brand across different categories and price points and different types of contemporary brands showcasing in-season trends and pre-orders. As far as our retailers, uh, they mostly they most own online and offline boutiques, some with several stores if they have storefronts. And many tend to utilize all three channels to to sell, i.e., you know, as a brick and mortar, as a storefront. Uh, they may have their own website and then uh, utilizing sort of the, the big marketplaces to uh, sell their products to the end consumers. And I would say many of our retailers are keen on in-season trends. So your perfect consumer uh, is you know, a, a cool boutique aimed at more of a millennial or maybe even younger customer that is trying to get the stuff that's you know, blowing up TikTok or Instagram uh, and is super in-season, super on trend. That, is that your kind of perfect customer? I wouldn't say it's a perfect customer. Yeah, sure. I, I think there is a huge young contemporary component to our portfolio of brands. But, you know, being around for 20 years, I would say that the demographic and the merchandising uh, encompasses uh, a broader age range, now, probably all ages, uh, quite frankly. Okay. Okay. But as far as... You know, if if you're saying H and M and Zara, when I when I if I was going to take a pie chart of their consumer, I would assume it would it would skew a little bit on the on the younger rate age as opposed to, you know, not a lot of sixty year olds are are rocking H and M. I would or maybe they are, I guess. Uh, but I would assume <laughs> no, that no. but but sixty year olds that I know aren't aren't wanting kind of faster fashion, super hip trend. I assume this is is going to skew a little younger. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I, well, it, that may be a uh, pretty accurate uh, ac- uh, characterization because I would say it's very trendy merchandise, right? Um, so, you, again, there is contemporary. And then we do have a lot of up-and-coming premium lines as well. So, you know, price points that are perhaps above uh, H&M and Zara. Uh, but the, the brands we have on our platform currently is uh, Tend to be more unique and up and coming, I would say. But uh, would on the pre- but would so I understand the manufacturers are coming straight to you, or the brands, the lines are coming straight to you as a way to 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 get their name out there to a lot of people that wouldn't normally know them. But as you know, Joe Blow, you know, twenty seven year old guy. He's not necessarily going onto your site to buy a new pair of jeans. It's it's more of like bulk ordering from, you know, other other consumer facing businesses that are coming in and and trying to stock their shelves. Is that correct? Absolutely. So it's completely. So I'm a little uh, slow on the uptake, Paul. You got to spell things out oh, for no, me. No, 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 no. It's uh, it took me a while too when I first got into the industry. But uh, so no worries there. But it's yeah, it's absolutely B two B, meaning there is a. Uh, Registration process, meaning uh, the end consumer cannot come to Fashion Go and shop for jeans or tops or uh, footwear. Uh, you have to have proof of business license, seller's permit, to prove that you're a legitimate business. Mm-hmm. 
in order to make purchases on uh, on Fashion Go, meaning we have to verify you. Right? It's, it's not an auto- automatic process where you can show up and um, make purchases. And, and that's obviously the same for our online trade show, which I'll uh, get into uh, at some point as well. So talk to me about the genesis of this business, because obviously right now, the, I know very little about about the the you know, the making the sausage in the, in the, in the fashion world. What little I know is there are key shows in, um, you know, New York city and other, other places where people want to come, they want to see the trends and they place their orders. You know, you guys sounds like you're, you're wanting to kind of democratize that process, give a lot of people access to that process that maybe was a little bit more restricted before. And then you have COVID, which makes, you know, somebody from a boutique in Atlanta, a lot harder to get up to Manhattan where they can absolutely shop on, on your site. Sounds like a fairly timely, uh, technology to, to bridge that gap. Is that, is that, was that the Genesis or walk me through the Genesis and walk me, um, through kind of your successes and failures along the way? Yeah, I I would say, well, I I think the the blanket comment I'm going to make here, Adam, is that I, you know, as I sit here and evaluate what's been going on with Fashion Go, um, I don't think pandemic has created new trends necessarily in terms of uh, the, the, pro- the merchandising or purchasing process. I, I think what it did was accelerate uh, the migration towards online purchasing. Um, so, to, I mean, this is a little bit more anecdotal perhaps, but, you know, when I think about uh, visiting a trade show even back in 14 versus uh, the, tra- you know, the traffic at the physical shows back in 14, uh, I would say it was, they were vastly higher than those uh, even last year. Um, so, again, that's not to say that physical shows won't be coming back after the pandemic, but I think it ends up being more of a hybrid model, right? And and perhaps the commerce side is done more online and the physical shows tend to be more relationship, experience, right? Yeah, relationship, yeah, experiential, relationship absolutely. And, and, entertainment, and entertainment and so forth. So there's that. And then there's also the trend of, you know, buy the consumer to buy now to wear now, right? So, so when you think about uh, merchandise budgeting in the past, a boutique with, uh, or a retailer would budget, call it 80 to 85%. At, uh, for, for the bigger buys, i.e. at trade shows, uh, versus, you know, 15 to 20% for immediate buys, right? Purchases on Fashion Go, let's say, uh, or, you know, a such marketplace. That has shifted to more of a 50 50, right? And, and obviously some of it is, you know, pandemic and, uh, you know, uh, controlling, uh, inventory and so on and so forth. So forth. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that there is an element where there's been a shift in the consumer mind, mindset too, where uh, they're buying to wear now. Understood, understood. So they're not buying for next season. They're buying to, to stock the shelves immediately. Exactly. Understood, understood. So talk, talk to me a little bit more about, you know, whose idea was this? How did you get it off the ground uh, and you know, was there was there a lot of trips to? I mean, I assume a lot of the stuff is made overseas. You know, how did you, how did you get all these suppliers, brands on board to to embark on this? You mean on the uh, the trade show, Fashion Go Week? Yes. Sure. Let me. You know, I, I think let me take a step back. Would it be helpful if I perhaps for you or for your audience to? describe a, a typical physical trade show uh, process, and then I'll compare and contrast with what we're currently doing. If you, that, hey, this, this, is, this is your hour, Paul. If you think that's helpful, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to listen. Okay. So in a typical physical trade show, uh, it's usually three to four days at a predetermined destination, right? Pick a city. Uh, there is a registration process for both brands and retailers to attend. Meaning, again, you can't just walk off the street to attend a trade show. I'll say there's usually a certain level of excitement as the retailers and exhibitors travel from all over the world to see new arrivals and 
connect with the fashion community. So also webinars and workshops and and the entertainment aspect, you know, happy hours and so forth, right, to build the relationships. And, and the trade shows are usually focused on, really focused and separate into different categories, right? So you have sections for women, accessories, men, children, footwear, and so forth. And all in all, a really successful trade show will have a turnout of about 60,000 or so, uh, you know, registrants, uh, participants, including exhibitors and staff. And, you know, as, as you know, Adam, uh, physical shows have been canceled, right, for the rest of the year, and who knows what's going to happen next year. But, you know, therefore, I would say that the whole event, Fashion Go Week, was really ex expedited by COVID-19. We had talks in the past by doing a digital face show, but didn't really get solidified until now. Uh, we thought it was particularly important timing with the peak holiday season coming up. You know, ultimately, we felt it was a natural progression to officially have a digital trade show as our platform is already set up like a trade show anyway. So if you think about, you know, if you visit our platform, you know, the, you know, the real estate on our site, there's sort of the main page, homepage highlighting uh, you know, certain brands and uh, the best sellers and categories and so forth. But there are individual uh, showrooms dedicated for, for specific brands, right? So it's already set up like a trade show. And with Fashion Go Week, uh, what we tried to do was capture the excitement of trade shows and the resources it provides into a digital experience, you know, without having to travel to a physical show in the middle of a pandemic. Hence, uh, we have webinars and vendor live interviews, brand videos, and lookbooks for buyer engagement. But I would say, Adam, the more important, the more most important tools that we offer versus a physical trade show are data-driven tools to help inform buying decisions. Uh, so, give me an example on our of that. Platform, you, sorry, I'd love to hear an example of 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 what you mean. So on our platform, you can, you can search with images, uh, search by items or brands uh, with a couple of clicks while sitting down. You also have visibility into real-time bestsellers uh, at a digital show in an easy to find format. So again, to compare and contrast the physical versus digital trade show, such as, you know, fashion go week, that the environment is such that in the physical show, a week, a retailer would have to walk the show floor and go to each booth to search for what they're looking for, compile and compare, and revisit, and, and sort of rinse and repeat. And if a retailer already has a relationship with vendors, they may book appointments prior to a trade show, but still, they still have to go through that laborious process at, versus finding everything in one digital platform in Fashion Go. And... There's also the accessibility and flexibility of being online. Um, again, there's no need to travel. You save on money and time. And our digital uh, short floor is open 24-7. So end of the day is when the retail retailer decides to call it quits versus the short floor uh, closing. Um, and we also have an easy-to-use checkout system where you can shop with multiple vendors and check out uh, at once. And... Lastly, getting back to our numbers, you know, we have 1,200 brands and 420,000 retailers, as I mentioned earlier, right? So this is impactful and significant exposure for exhibiting brands, considering the successful turnout for an in-person trade show is around 60,000 or so. And, and that's a fraction in comparison to registered buyers on Fashion Go. Now, how did you publicize fashion go week to both the potential brands that want to sell their wares and the the people that are wanting to come in and, and take advantage like how did you spread the word how did you get people excited about it uh, and you know I'd, I'd love to understand you know what your projections are for this digital version and, and how that would stack up against a um, a, a traditional trade show yeah, I think we, uh, most of our promotion was uh, done through social and, and some publication. Uh, but as you know, Adam, you know, most of 
marketing is done through uh, social means uh, in any case. But, you know, we do have sort of a fashion go community, right, be it in uh, Facebook or otherwise. Um, so, you know, we ha- our reach is, again, to not to be redundant, you know, 420,000 uh, retail buyers that we engage in actively, right, it be a email communication, Instagram or uh, Facebook, uh, and same goes for uh, our brands, our total hundred brands. Uh, there's active discussions uh, about any type of event, particularly you know uh, an event such you know big as this. So you know there's plenty of uh, sort of marketing time devoted to actually communicating uh, sort of the the themes and um, so, sort of the tools that uh, you know that was going to be available to both the brands and the retailers. What is your plan? Do, do you see this Fashion Go Week becoming a annual, biannual, quarterly? Like, like what does success look like as you guys are trying to scale this thing? Yeah, so, so it's, you know, it's definitely uh, recurring. Uh, it's, you know, obviously, this was our first. So we already have plans for next year. So it will be twice a year, and we're already planning for the next show in February. That's really exciting. I bet a tremendous amount of work goes into this. Since you guys are on the cutting edge and seeing you know, what is being produced, and then obviously you'll have real-time data about what kind of the tastemakers think is next in the fashion world, uh, I, can, I can only assume that there's been a very interesting shift in the types of clothes that retailers are seeking. Uh, I, I can tell you that you know, I'm wearing a lot less kind of sports coats and, and loafers these days and, and a lot more kind of casual clothes. And I know that Lululemon is obviously breaking every sales record that, that they've ever written. Um, have, have you guys seen a shift in the, in the type of clothes uh, that, that, is, that is of the moment? Uh, sure. Uh, you, you know, obviously, uh, it's sort of uh, what you just said, Adam. Uh, you know, there is, there has been a shift to more homeware type of uh, homeware type of clothing. Um, everyone's working from home, including me. Right? Uh, no need to uh, get the fancy merchandise or you know, perhaps as trendy uh, merchandise. So. Um, I would say, you know, in terms of timing, we actually started seeing this in March, and maybe uh, there was sort of a anticipation of uh, of uh, the, the pandemic, you know, uh, being prolonged, and uh, and certainly uh, we saw a huge uptick in uh, sort of COVID nineteen um, uh, essentials, kind of masks, and so forth, um, and, and, and which we expected. So what can you do? You, you mentioned earlier that, I mean, you are taking a lot of the major building blocks of an in-person trade show and digitizing it. What can you do to continue to refine the platform to replace some of the social aspect? Because in my world, we have, we have you know, big trade shows you know, probably four times a year. There, there's many more, but there's big ones that, that we pretty much uh, have to go to. And I've always found that a lot of my business gets done off the floor. You know, it's, it's a happy hour, it's a dinner, you know, it's a, it's a meeting that, that I'm able to have with other kind of decision makers that are, that are at these trade shows. What can you guys try to do to keep evolving your platform to continue to, to be even more effective than just, just the actual transactions between suppliers and retailers? Yeah, I think you know that goes back to the tools that we provide for our brands and the vendors, and and it's really giving the, the brands the ability to tell a story. Um, so with uh, Fashion Go Week, and this will go on, you know, uh, uh, this will happen going forward as well. But you know, there are specific brand videos that. Uh, uh, that the, the apparel manufacturers are creating. There are certain lookbooks they're creating. Um, we have designated sections on the main page for the vendors' new arrival, arrivals, uh, exclusive for, for Fashion Go Week. Uh, we provide uh, 
you know, again, I, I think the, the point being that it's really an exposure opportunity for for the brand to market to 420,000 retailers versus, you know, 50 or 60 that you would get a physical trade show. Yeah, that, the scope and the, the scale of what you can offer is, is hard to replicate. Um, so I've got an offbeat question for you. Uh, a few years ago, uh, my wife, I, I'll say drug me, but actually I had a pretty good time to the New York Fashion Week, and we were able to see you know, some, some, pretty, some pretty interesting shows there. Uh, we actually got to see the DVF show. I sound cool because I know what DVF is when I really have no business knowing that. And, but the pomp and circumstance around it, uh, Naomi Campbell walked the walk the catwalk when we were there. I mean, it, it was it was very very glitzy and glamorous. Um, do, do you guys have any plans in the future to to how do you spice up? How do you add the the sexiness to it that? That obviously the New York Fashion Week does very very well. How can you how can you get that across um, in in the digital universe? Or are those just going to need to be two totally separate things? You guys do the 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 dirty work of of getting the getting all these brands into the hands of all these people, and maybe there's another another avenue for the for the the sexy part. Yeah, you know, I, I think that. Uh, you know, I think about sort of the primary objective uh, of our retailers when they come to our site, uh, and it's—I mean, it's, it's not to say that they, I'm sure they wouldn't mind the fireworks, and 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 we could consider that too. But you, you know, it's they, they come to our site to make very efficient, informed purchasing decisions, Adam. Um, and and if you think about it, and I, I think I mentioned this earlier. We have over one million dollar, one million merchandise on a given day, right? So, to shift that, shift through that, without uh, the tools that we provide, I mean, it would be impossible, right? Uh, so, in uh, let me take this a little bit further. So, search in B two B environment is, is critical, and, and it has to be comprehensive, right? Uh, you have to figure out. Um, you know, styles and uh, material price and, and uh, which vendors, they all come into play. And to gather this information, it's a huge investment in time and resources. So Fashion Go uh, offers a one-stop shop to help retailers simplify this process. It saves them time and aims to provide exactly what the retailers are looking for. So just to give you an example of search, uh, there's text. Uh, you know, sort of traditional text way of searching. Uh, but what we also provide is visual search for uh, accuracies and, and comparisons. And our recently launched Style Match Plus is, is a visual search technology that allows you to find a style that you'd like anywhere on the web, right? You could be outside of Fashion Go and come back to Fashion Go and find similar products on Fashion Go, all with just two clicks. And there are different ways to search for merchandise on our platform um, by item or by vendor, uh, which is pretty unique. And you also need to have understanding of insights and trends and ultimately know what the best sellers are, right, especially with this upcoming holiday season. And, and all of that's data-driven on our platform. So uh, there's a section called Best of the Best, where Fashion Go lists all the best sellers, and it's the first place uh, that retailers visit when they when they log into our site. And I would say all of that helps to predict better sell through, which is uh, the ultimate goal. Uh, when you have, you know, when you're uh, sorting through over one million in merchandise uh, in Fashion Go, it's it's truly a brilliant way to to streamline the process. Uh, it's amazing that that you guys were able to, to figure this out. What, what other areas do you think, because I'm fascinated with digital transformation in the, in the retail business. And, and this was not an area that I would normally just gravitate to because I, I know nothing about the industry. Uh, but 
everything from you know being able to buy a mattress online, which would have sounded hilarious ten years ago, to doing mm-hmm. away with trade shows. It's it's amazing this digitization of uh, of the the entire retail wholesaling process. It's 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 very very interesting. What what other areas are you guys working on? Any other um, avenues um, that that you think are ripe for digital disruption like this, or or is this you know one of those? I woke up in the middle of the night and this was it kind of aha moments. Yeah, look, if I you know uh, if I get into what my vision is for Fashion Go, Adam, uh, I would say I. I for fashion, I want to sell everything in B two B fashion, right? And and right now, our platform, the portfolio of brands, is uh, you know, dominated by women. Uh, so I, you know, I want to continue to expand into footwear, accessory, men's, uh, and beauty. And so that's a you know, product expansion. And I and I do want to expand geographically as well, right? And and heavier emphasis on. Uh, international. We're already in Canada, but you know we want to uh, branch out into other continents, uh, you know, very soon as well. And then um, goes back to what I said earlier. You know, I want to make sure that uh, people are selling at the lowest prices, and, and therefore we, you know, we don't charge uh, high commissions. And the, and the last part is. You know, uh, making the purchasing experience for our buyers uh, you know, seamless, and, and that only comes through innovations, right? So we are constantly thinking about ways to innovate our platform so that our buyers are making informed purchasing decisions. And and I think, you know, I keep going back to these two examples, but that visual search tool, file management plus that I alluded to earlier, is one and. Uh, this online trade show is another, and you know these are, you know, initiatives that are, that we're taking to move the fashion industry forward. Yeah, it, it's it's truly an exciting time. Do you, what percentage of your customers on the end user retailer end are brick and mortar retailers versus you know some sort of online shop? Do you have do you have that data? And is that data changing? Are more people going online or more people going brick and mortar? Yeah, I, I would say hmm, it's, it's one of those things that it's, uh, it's not as easy to pinpoint uh, just because, and, and I'll go back to my earlier comment about um, sort of the categories of uh, channels, uh, selling channels for our peaks, right? Kind of storefronts and owned websites and marketplaces. Um, and perhaps because the industry is uh, shifting where, you know, the, the lines are sort of blurred and people are using all three channels perhaps or two out of three channels. So um, I, I think that data ends up being a little bit harder to pinpoint. And, and even if you do, uh, it's a moving target anyway. Interesting, interesting. I would, I would think that... I would think that uh, there are, I guess there's so many online marketplaces for every everything fashion related. I guess once once the sale is made, I mean, it, it could change hands two or three times uh, before somebody's wearing it on the street. So what else do people need to understand or know about Fashion Go Week, about what you guys are doing? Um, I, I'd, I'd love to hear kind of a parting shot with, if, if you could really kind of put a bow on this thing, what you guys are trying to accomplish, you know, what your, what the future looks like for you, help people understand, uh, you know, why they should, they should sit up and take notice of what you guys are doing. Yeah. I I think to wrap it up, um, you know, I I really want to let the retailers know that, um, you know, fashion go week is, uh, and we're already doing this in any case, but it's an event where, um, they can make informed buying decisions, and and with um, with the tools that we have, uh, you know, as far as the ability to search by item and brand, uh, access to real time bestsellers, and then you also have 
uh, engagement with the brands, right? Uh, when they're telling their stories uh, via either the brand videos or live interviews um, and um, see their latest arrivals and have access to exclu exclusive items uh, at the uh, trade show. Um, and, you know, uh, it's our first ever event. Uh, and, uh, you know, we think that it will be a very successful and very useful um, sort of a medium for both brands and, and the retailers. Uh, but, you know, we're going to keep going here, Adam, meaning, you know, it's, it's happening, you know, next year, the following year, and, and the process and sort of the, you know, the event and engagement between the buyer and sellers and the purchasing prices, the process will only get better. It's, it's amazing. Um, I, I can tell you that, uh, you know, I, I have the pleasure of talking to really cutting edge, interesting retailers um, every single week. And what I hear over and over, you mentioned it earlier, you know, we're, we're seeing this rapid acceleration of all the trends that were already happening and I think you're right on the cutting edge of of a potential trend with with trade shows having to to morph, and uh, it's very interesting. Uh, I learned a lot about the process, but do me a favor, uh, tell people how they can find out more about about Fashion Go Week, about what you guys are doing, how they can access the site. Just give people a crash course on how they can find out more information about you guys. Sure. Uh, you know, I think the easiest thing would be to come to fashiongo.net uh, backslash fashiongoweek2020. Or if you, even if you just go to fashiongo.net, uh, you know, Fashion Go Week is uh, visible everywhere. Uh, as, hence, it's very easy to find. And, uh, you know, if uh, the readers wanted to contact me uh, directly, uh, I'm at paul.lee at nhnglobal.com. Um, and lastly, about the, the, the Fashion Go Week uh, event, uh, it's two weeks. Uh, it started uh, on the 24th of August, uh, and it will run through September 6th. Well, that's wonderful. I, I've learned a ton. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes out of your time or out of your day. Uh, it's truly exciting time to be in the retail space, and I, I think that you guys are on to something that's, that's truly cutting edge. And the bottom line is it, it's going to add a lot of value to these retailers when it's so hard to navigate. It's so hard to do these trade shows. I, I think that you guys are going to hit it out of the park. Paul, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been another episode of Retail Redeveloped. And uh, thank you again for your time. Thanks for having me, Adam.